What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, well, I want to talk Transformers trading card games. I, I, I do quite like the Transformers trading card game, if I'm honest with you. I make quite a few videos about it because I love it. Another thing I really love is cheeky damage. When I say cheeky damage, I'm referring to direct damage or non-attack damage or damage done without actually using your attack for the turn. And we've had a couple of cards revealed this week that are particularly good at cheeky damage, which means they have particularly caught my eye. Now, they were dropped on the official Transformers TCG Facebook, and we've got Kami and Crash, and we've got Magnetic Dysfunction Ray. Really good for Decepticons. But we'll start with a general one. Kami and Crash is an action card with a black icon, which means if you flip it while attacking, you get plus one pierce until the end of the turn, not the attack, the turn. But it means if you flip it while defending, nothing happens, boo, hiss, etc. And you do one damage to one of your characters, which isn't ideal. And then you do two damage to an enemy, which kind of is ideal. Now, what this really is, is Plasma Burst. Except what they're saying is, look, you can have a battle icon... But you've got to take one damage on one of your characters. And the rule is very simple, right? If you're willing to take the damage, Kami and Crash. If you want to play the black icon, Kami and Crash. If you don't want the damage or can't handle it, Plasma Burst. And if you really don't need the black icon, then probably Plasma Burst is still better. Of course, the other one we've got, which is quite similar to this, is Marksmanship. Marksmanship has a blue icon, really good when you're defending. The problem with Marksmanship is it only works if you've got a ranged character on the battlefield, and you only get to do two damage to an enemy that is currently in bot mode. That's not to say it's bad. Marksmanship is great. Marksmanship sees a bunch of play. But it is to say that Plasma Burst just does two damage to an enemy. Kami and Crash just does two damage to an enemy. Marksmanship, if you meet the criteria set down by the card, deals two damage to an enemy. Now, let's go back to this whole dealing one damage to yourself. There are a few ways to deal with this. One way to deal with it is just go, you know what, doesn't matter. I'm playing a big character, I've got high HP, I don't think it's going to matter. Bring it on, mate. Bring it on. Not sure that's the best option, but it is an option nonetheless. Another option would be Ultra Magnus Armor. Ultra Magnus Armor, you put on Autobots only, and if the upgraded character would take non-attack damage... Instead, it takes that much damage minus one. And this will work. This will protect you from Kami and Crash. The problem is, it's the only two-star battle card we've seen so far. Playing this just for Kami and Crash is basically saying you'd rather have this than any two other star cards or two more stars to spend on characters. Either way, I don't think we can really get behind it. Now, we do have Motormaster. Motormaster's great. Motormaster protects your characters from non-attack damage. The problem is it only works for your opponent's cards, and that's not a good thing. Similarly, Captain Ironhide in alt mode, but it only protects from your opponent's cards. Otherwise, you could try and put it on Ironhide and it would fail and you'd be fine. So that's all a little bit sad. The other thing you can do is just try and use this. Obviously, if you're playing some kind of Insecticon deck, might I suggest a bit of the old Ransack? Because you see, Ransack has got attack equal to the amount of damage on him. So you put a bit more damage on, and then actually Ransack comes along and hits a little bit harder. I'm not saying it's the best option. I'm saying it's a valid option. Or you could be playing something like Bombing Run. Bombing Run lets you choose an enemy character and move one damage from each of your planes to that enemy. So clearly that would work. Or if you're not playing a plane deck, how about you go ahead and play a bit of the old fling? 
move a damage counter from one of your characters to an enemy. Or you could use Private Mudslinger's tap skill. You tap and scrap a black icon card from your hand, bearing in mind this is a black icon card, so you'd probably be playing it in a Pierce deck, and you move one damage counter from one of your characters to an enemy. If you've got the space to spare, I think Mudslinger might be one of the better options here. You just need a way around it. We don't, okay, you don't necessarily need a way around it. Also, right, if we're talking fling, we should probably talk special delivery, which is basically fling of a black icon. So, kind of ruins fling a little bit. Also, if you're playing a PS deck, and you're playing a bunch of black icons, it would be really good to play Kami and Crash, and then play special delivery, and then what you're actually doing is dropping free damage, which is a bolt of lightning, which is a star card, and you're packing your deck out with black icon cards as well. The message here is very simple. If you can afford to just take a hit, brilliant, I suppose. Most of the time, this is going to be a really good option in either pierce decks where you can stomach taking the damage or in decks where you actually can use this. Outside of that, maybe don't bother. Maybe just play Plasma Burst. Now, the other card we've had shown here is Magnetic Dysfunction Ray, and this is just a more extreme version of Kami and Crash, and a lot of what I've said about that card will apply to this card. It's got a black and an orange icon, so you've still got that black icon, but then you've got an orange icon as well, so that you can do a bit more damage while attacking. And you do one damage to each character... And then you do one damage to each Autobot. That is brilliant. This reminds me very, very much of a card which I've been trying to use since it came out, but it's so risky. Photon Bomb. You see, what Photon Bomb does is two damage to each character. Now, this isn't Photon Bomb. But if you're playing a Decepticon deck and you're playing against an Autobot deck, and Autobots have been more popular up to now, you do one damage to each of your characters and two damage to each of your opponent's characters. That is to say, they take more damage than you. Oh, that's really good. And if you make it a Decepticon Planes deck, come on, Thundercracker being viable at last. Then actually you could use Bombing Run to do two damage to all of your opponents and one damage to all of yours. But then Bombing Run moves all of that damage onto one of your opponent's characters and all of a sudden things have gotten spicy. And it's not always going to work. Sometimes it will fail. Sometimes you won't be against any Autobots whatsoever and you're just doing one damage to each character, which isn't necessarily bad, but it does mean that we're really not getting the most value out of this that we can. And also it becomes extremely risky to play in any deck where you're playing Autobots. I mean, if you're one of those people and there's plenty of people out there that are trying to tech in little Autobots, little five-star characters like Arcee, it's going to be extremely difficult to do that when you know you've got this card in your deck. But then again, isn't it about time Decepticons had some lovely tricks? For a long time, we had Press the Advantage, and then it got banned because it was overly good, which gave one of your Autobots plus two attack until end of turn, and an enemy Decepticon minus two defense until end of turn. Is this as extremely awesome as Press the Advantage? No. No, I don't think it is. I think Press the Advantage is a considerably better card. Is this going to be the kind of card that makes people turn around and go, you know what, maybe it's actually worth playing Decepticons now. Maybe this is the point where we go, you know what, Decepticons might be the way to go. And I don't know is the honest answer. Nobody knows, not until we actually start seeing some tournaments being played. But I do feel extremely confident saying that this gives you a great, great option for Decepticon decks. And it gives you a really good reason to want to play Decepticon decks. Make no mistake about it, this is a really good card. But I do not think this is the kind of card where you can just whack it in any deck and cross your fingers. I think you've got to be a little bit careful. 
You've got to have some kind of exit plan. Either you've got enough HP that you don't care, or you've got something like bombing runs so you can actually take advantage of the extra damage being done to yourself. Either way, I... I love these cards. And I'm a man that loves cheeky damage, right? You know I'm a man that loves cheeky damage. And that means I'm always going to gravitate towards cards like this a little bit more readily than other people. And I'm totally all right with that. I think it's brilliant. And I'm a big fan. But I'd like to know what you think about these cards. Let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy. That's where we talk Transformers and Keyforge and Digimon and a whole bunch of fun games. And do please consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all kinds of fun stuff. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.